Why Ridley Scott wouldn't direct a Star Wars movie It wasn't so long ago that Lucasfilm had honcho Kathleen Kennedy, revealed that the Star Wars universe is looking to expand into new territory with a slew of new projects on the TV and film front. Although Ryan Johnson has already signed on to head up a brand new trilogy, Disney and Lucasfilm are going to need to bring in some new blood in terms of directors at some point. However, if you were hoping Ridley Scott might be interested, you'd be mistaken. The director recently declared he's too dangerous to direct an upcoming Star Wars film, noting, No, no. I'm too dangerous for that. Because I know what I'm doing. Laughs, I think they like to be in control, and I like to be in control myself. When you get a guy who's done a low-budget movie and you suddenly give him $180 million, it makes no sense whatsoever. It's fucking stupid. You know what the reshoots cost? There are plenty of directors who would love to work on a Star Wars movie. That said, there are also a slew of directors who know themselves well enough to know they would be a bad fit for working on a Star Wars film, even if they've ventured into Marvel territory before. Such as Thor, Ragnarok director Taika Waititi. Ridley Scott seems to certainly know his mind and know he would be a bad fit for an upcoming Star Wars venture, and in his mind it seems to be better to know his place rather than try and fail, like Phil Lord and Chris Miller did. As for the last part of Ridley Scott's statement to Vulture, I'm not really sure who he is taking a shot at, here. Rogue One, A. Star Wars Story needed reshoots, but Gareth Edwards had directed the big-budget monster feature Godzilla back in 2014, so it wasn't like he was totally unexperienced with budgets before he signed on for Rogue One. Phil Lord and Chris Miller were also fired from Solo, a Star Wars story, and Ron Howard reshot what he felt needed to be reshot, but Lord and Miller weren't exactly low-budget guys, either. They'd done the Lego movie in the mid-budget ventures 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street, so it's not like they were totally unexperienced at bringing movies to the masses, even Colin Trevorrow, who was replaced by J.J. Abrams for Episode 9, had done Jurassic World, so again, no idea what Ridley Scott is going for there. Regardless, he won't be doing a Star Wars movie, although if he did do a Star Wars movie, one of the pros to hiring him is that he comes in under the given budget. He added, you can get me for my fee, which is heavy, but I'll be under budget and on time. This is where experience does matter, it's as simple as that. There are plenty of projects Ridley Scott can and has been able to do over the years, and there are plenty of others he hasn't been excited about. If he doesn't slap his name on a Star Wars film at some point, he seems to be totally fine with it. Right now, you can catch his new movie All the Money in the World competing in theaters opposite Star Wars Episode 8. The Last Jedi. Here is how the holiday box office is panning out. Please enable JavaScript to view the comments.